uh, regular hours for us, I hear? A few weeks. You take some holiday time from the force. Oh, nice. You see that guy in the corner? He's got to go. He's not with us. OK. Hey, get out. What's the problem? The problem is you're dealing this club without my permission, and that offends me. I'm not dealing anything. That's right, you're not. Put whatever you're carrying on the counter. I'm not carrying. Put it on the counter. I'm going to count to three. One, two, thank you. Get out. This is cocaine? Yeah. This is all of it? Yeah. You're not very good at this, are you? Maybe you should get a new train. Okay, pack the rest of it up and get out. I can take this? Yes, pack it up and get out. You're lucky you didn't get a beating. My name is Dino. I gave you a break. I want you to remember that. Bravo, Delta, something, something. He's, uh... Gaby Street. He's got a young chickie with him. He's carrying six eights. Dino just tossed a guy. No. Nope. There he goes. Well, she was still fairly young, no? 60. Just had a birthday. Yeah, she was on the downhill for a while, though. She had a series of mini strokes, and I think the last one did it. Still way too young. Probably a bit of a blessing. You all right with that? You want me to take the wreath? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for everything. It's harder than I thought it was going to be. Take a minute. Just got to put my face on. I think you can just be yourself, Leo. You're with friends. We all love you. Give me a sec, OK? How you doing? Good. I was hoping Good. I could catch Russ before he went to work. Oh, sorry, Dominic. He went in for an early meeting with city council. He did. Mayor's life starts early. <laughs> Would you mind if I asked you a couple questions? 
Is uh, this uh, about the hit and run? It's about the hit and run. I want to clear a few things up. So we can put this whole thing behind us. I hope that's why you're here. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Oh, uh, well, the house is a bit of a mess, I'm afraid. Well, we can do it out here if that's all right. It's only going to take a second. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, I was just interested. Uh, yeah. The night of the accident, were you, were you at home when, when uh, Russ got home? Yeah, as usual. I was home. What time was that have been? Uh, somewhere between 2 and 2.30. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's got to be precise. And did you hear the car pull up? No. No. Then you don't know for sure that's how he got home, by his own car, eh? How else would he have gotten here? That's a pretty good question. I assume. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair answer. Um, whose side are you on? Well, the deceased. You have your paper? Fair answer. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, what time? Did you see the car in the morning when you got up? Was it still here? No, it wasn't here. I woke Russ, and he got up, and he called the police and reported it stolen. What time was that about? 6.15. He's habitual. Boy, that's a brutal time to have to get up. What about during the night? Did you hear anything out here? Maybe a car starting up, voices. No. No? No, no. Are you through? No. Yeah. No, forgive me for having to try and clarify this, but I just want to straighten my mind. You didn't hear, you didn't see the car. Did you happen to talk to your husband when he arrived? We sleep in separate rooms, all right? Oh, okay. Now you know. Sorry. Well, you know what I'll do? Maybe I'll go down to City Hall and see if I can catch him down there. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Nice to see you. And nice to see you too, Abby. Likewise. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sergeant Kurtz? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Detective Curtis Feiss. I'm, I just want to introduce myself. Say hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm not sure if you've, if you've heard of me. Uh, I've been helping out Detectives Leary and Cosmo in a trio of homicides I'm tangentially involved in. Right. The, uh, the snitches. Yeah, my snitches. My informants. Unfortunately, in one instance, uh, a friend of mine, I know it may sound a little strange calling him a friend, but that happens, I guess. Yeah, I understand. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to put a face to the name. That's Brian. Okay, Brian, nice to meet you. Yeah, listen, also, I just wanted to let you know that I'm trying to provide as much intelligence as I can to your detectives in these cases here, and I think we're going to be seeing a break pretty soon. I hope so. Nice to meet you. Likewise. What's next? Joe Finn from Internal. What's he after? Well, there's been three related homicides involving informants over the last couple of years. Apparently, he's got breaking news on those. These are registered informants on our payroll? No, off the books. Anything I should know about before we call Joe in here? Yeah, there is an issue related to the Fink Fund. Which is? One of the officers involved, uh, Vice Detective Brian Curtis. The deceased informants, they were all under his supervision. They all received pretty healthy payments from the fund. Now they're deceased. So there's no confirmation about the cash they received. So there's no confirming whether they actually received the amounts Curtis says they did or whether he pocketed some of that. Is that your inference? That's it. Okay. Send Joe in. Joe. Congratulations, Bill. Job looks good on you. Thanks. Joe, sit down. So, I'm just catching up here. Three dead informants. Never a good thing. No. And it's getting a little sticky as I get into it. Briefly, we've got another informant, a young woman, Sue Lewis, who's allegedly involved in the deaths of the other three, who's gotten very close to Detective Cosmo, one of the lead detectives in the case. I would like to interview the informant, but I've got some concerns there. If you interview the informant, you may upset the relationship between Cosmo and her and impede her investigation. Right. The other concern is Detective Curtis. He's angling to move in a homicide and may be influencing his interpretation of the situation. He could be throwing his own to the game. Okay, so what do we know about the character of the informant suspect, this uh, Sue Lewis? She's in the sex trade, she's an addict, but it's all secondhand to me. Now I figure we can pick her up in some unrelated thing, put her in lockup, and see if we can't get some cooperation out of her. She's an addict, I imagine she'll get pretty cooperative if we're patient. Well, that sounds like a good approach. Do that. And thanks for bringing this to me. I'm gonna have to do an overall intelligence review very shortly, so... We'll be having some further discussions about all that anyway. I'm going to be coming to you for advice. All right, good. I've got some opinions there, too. I look forward to hearing them. It's good to see you in the chair. How are the wife and kids? Good. Good. All's quiet on the home front. Thanks for asking. 
Well, if you're having an affair, remember the two bridge rule. You got a minute? Yeah, sure, Zach. Get in. What are you doing sitting in your car? It's on your mind. Who are you waiting for? It's on your mind, Zach. Okay. I get an anonymous call in the middle of the night last night, all right, from a female. I don't know why she called me. I didn't recognize her voice. Yeah. You know, I don't understand the connection. I thought maybe you will. I'm listening. Okay. Female voice. Hello, this is Zach, etc. Right? Oh. And then she spills it. You might want to check the 911 calls made from Linda Davis's home. Linda Davis, the man's yeah. girlfriend? Oh, yeah. What was that? What are you going to do with that? Well, I'm telling you, you can do something with it. No, no. I just got my early retirement notice, all right, which I don't like. I'm not touching that. I'm not going anywhere near it, OK? I don't even care what the hell it's about. Well, it might be about the hit and run. I'm not in the habit of following up on anonymous rumors. I'm just not going down that road, and that's the end of that story. When were these alleged 911 calls made? I don't know. See, I don't even know if they're made the night in question. You don't even know if they're made at all. No, I, I don't know what to do with the information, OK? I'm all amped up. I don't know what the hell to do. No. Could this be uh, Linda Davis herself, do you think? Maybe you know her voice. You've talked to well, her. Well, I talked to her a couple of times, but I'm not sure I'd recognize her telephone voice. Mm. You know, I was wondering, maybe it might be the mayor's wife. Oh, no, forget it. Don't even speculate. Just tuck, tuck that one away. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to subpoena the phone records, because I can do that, you know. That's what I'm going to do. This thing's getting way too wormy. You know, and then I'm up half the night, you know, wondering about who in the hell would do something like this, you know? Yeah. Why am I getting this tip? How do they know that I'm investigating it, right? On and on, you know? I answer one question, and I roll over. There's six more hanging in the wind, right? Right. Right? I'm so tired, I can't see straight. So what's the theory? What do you think's going on? Well. Somebody who's trying to serve the mayor up on a platter is what I think. Somebody smells blood in the water. Somebody smells blood in the water. Okay, let me know if you get any more midnight calls. Hey, Bill. Bill, how are you? You got a minute? Hey, Dom. We're a little pressed for time. I wasn't talking to you. If I was talking to you, I would have said hey, ass, but I didn't, did I? You just give us five minutes. What can I do for you? I just wanted to ask you straight up about a couple of things. Shoot. What's behind this Roy Cardinal situation? Roy Cardinal. Not familiar with the name. You're not familiar with the name. OK, that's a kid that two of your officers punched out after they breached him off the mall. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. What about it? I'm not giving up on that one, just so you know. You're investigating? Yes, I am. I think you got a problem with a few of your members. And I think maybe it might be a good idea if you send out a little stronger message than what you're presently sending. Last year, there was the girl that had the needle exchange. That was not on my watch, Dominic. Both you Native know that. Canadians, by the way, both Aboriginals. I don't know if that's of any interest or not. That's fine. You go ahead, investigate, make your report. I will. Promise I'll give it a good read. OK, just as long as it passes under your nose on the way to the waste paper basket number two. The day you landed the job, did you get a call from the mayor? Sure, I did. He called me to come to a meeting. Was that about the job or another matter? Well, I think that would come under the heading of none of your business. OK, well, OK, that's a good answer. That's all I needed to ask. OK, what's this about, Dominic? Thank you, you answered. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You starting a war here? I don't know, am I? You got something you want to tell me? Yeah, I do. I want to tell you to back the hell up, let me do my job. You stick to yours. OK, I'll back up. What am I backing up from, exactly? I will handle any disciplinary matters that need handling with my officers. I don't need your help. No offense, but we don't need any outside interference. Well, see, that's a point that we disagree about. We have a basic disagreement, you and me, on that particular point. Any cleaning up that needs doing, I will do it. I don't need your help. I don't need your advice. And I'd appreciate it if you gave me a little grace period in which to do it. Grace period? You're pretty funny. You know, I think you got to take the helm a little stronger than what you're doing, my friend. All I see you doing is getting that broom out and sweeping all the under the rug. It's got to be some dirt on him. Yes, sir. Hey, Mick. Hey, Ange. How you doing? Good. How long you been here? Oh, a good couple of hours. Just been waiting on a fisherman who called in, said he heard something, but uh, he hasn't shown up yet. 
I'm just taking a little time to think this thing through a little bit. So you got it figured out? Let me run this by you, though, see what you think. Okay. Let's just say that Will decides for whatever reason he's going to take a load of weed on the boat himself, despite the fact that he hasn't got his hands dirty personally in five years. So he's not just down here fixing the fuel pump. But what's his motivation for making the run himself? Running short on cash? What? No, no, he's got cash. He's got millions anytime he wants it. Uh, I don't know, maybe as a favor to somebody else? I don't know. Let, let's just forget about the motivation for a minute and put it down to business as usual. Okay. Okay? So whoever took him off then, whoever orchestrated this rip, how do they know where the boat is? When it's loaded with weed and when they hit it? They've been watching him. Yeah, see, that, that's where it goes sideways for me. Fifteen years Will's been smuggling, never got caught. Huh? He runs his own counter-surveillance operations. So they'd have to be pretty good not to get spotted by him, is what you're saying? Yeah, they'd have to be pretty good. They'd have to be really good. I mean, you'd have to know where the boat was going to take on a load of weed, when, who's going to be on board, how you can handle the actual robbery, the offload, the getaway. It's, it's not a simple plan. It's hard enough pulling off a drug rip on land and way harder on the water. Mm -hmm. and just the logistics alone. Forget about all the advanced intelligence you need to figure out when, when to hit the boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to watch the targets. They're used to being watched, right? Well, maybe it's somebody close to Will. You know, somebody who knows all the details just because they hang out with him and Will trusts them. Some longtime partner? No, I don't go for that. I don't. No, I knew Will a long time. And he was successful because he never made mistakes. And he didn't make mistakes because he was obsessive about his security. Well, what about the girlfriend or whatever she is, the Vietnamese chick? Myla. Don't think so. Don't. Who's this here? Oh, this is uh, Will's father, Eric. I asked him just to come down and take a look at the boat. Hey, Eric. Hey there. This is Angela Cosmo, my partner. Uh, Eric Summers, Will's father. Hello, Angela. My condolences for your son. Eric, did, uh, did Will ever mention a woman named Lila? A Vietnamese woman? You, you ever remember hearing that name? No, I don't recognize her. That doesn't mean he didn't know her. What does she do? Apparently, she and Will were close friends. Yeah, well, he had a few girlfriends. That's why he and Emily, his wife, they weren't living together anymore. He was fooling around, she was fooling around. Good life doesn't always stay good. Right. So, were they talking about divorce? Yeah. Yeah, she was down at their place in Mexico. I think they'd be looking to sell it. They were fighting about money? As I understand it, yeah. Oh, Will had a lot of money stashed around, but couldn't declare it all and get it and share it around easily. Plus, Emily didn't trust him. Hmm. Do you think that there's a chance that Emily might know something about this? Well, you'd have to ask her. She's still in Mexico. Say, can I have a look around? Yeah, go ahead, do it. It's been a few years since I've been aboard. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same, though. Hey, Dougie. So what's new, man? Well, you told me to call you if I ever had anyone important pick me up. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Come here. I'm not gonna bite you. What, what do you got? You got a celebrity for me? You promised me a celebrity. I got my drug counselor. Who's your drug counselor? He works out of the downtown east side. I went in to try to get treatment and he came on to me. What? You gonna see him again? Yeah, he's a regular. Semi-regular. So what, once, twice a week? Two or three times. So what's the usual story? He call you, or...? No, uh, we usually just set a rendezvous for the next time, and he swings by, picks me up, and we go someplace in his car. What's his status? Single? Married? He's got two young kids. He's married. All right, listen, you, uh, let me know when your next rendezvous is, okay? It's tonight. We're meeting down at Pacific Boulevard at 10. Yeah. All righty. Okay, listen, is the intersection down there? Yeah, yeah, on the bottom of Richards. I called over there several times, actually, to the point of becoming a nuisance. You know, I used to have a nice sort of chatty thing going with the receptionist over there. Now I feel kind of like I've been dumped. Mm -hmm. You know the feeling. Oh, I do. Maybe let's forget the receptionist. Go right after Claire. Find out what the mayor's doing today, what his schedule might be, and I can go ambush him. Okay. And uh, do you know someone by the name of Isabel Sandinovo? Isabel? Yeah. What does she want? Well, she wants to take you to dinner. Okay, yeah, yeah. Book that. Book that. Who's Isabel? Well, Isabel used to be a, a bag man for the prime minister, but last year I've heard she's been coming out here periodically because she's handling the new ministers, I'm assuming. Well, what, what did she say it was concerning? It's about the red light district. The red light district? Very interesting. So I, um, I see you're getting into my book there. Oh. 
Yeah. I was going to mention that to you. Yeah? It starts out good. Really? How far did you get? Does it does it stay good? Why? Well, I, I think so. Well, good. I, 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 I hope so. I'm kind of anxious to know what you think, though, because, you know, the guy's based a little on you. I could kind of tell that. Yes. Oh, I got an idea for you. It involves the mayor. Setting up the ambush. Thank you. Eddie? That's me. Hey, Eddie. Mick Leary. This is Angela Cosmo back to her homicide. Oh, yeah. How you doing? All right. So you were down on the docks the other night? Yeah. Um, I was just leaving to pick up my nets at the loft. What time was that? About uh, 1 a.m. Can you tell us what you saw? Well, I saw Will's boat. Will on the back deck, and uh, it was tied up next to another boat. He was talking to a couple guys. Could you hear what they were talking about? No. No, my engines were running. Get a good look at these guys. Pretty good. It was a clear night. Yeah? What they look like? The white guys. Uh, like fishermen. Mm -hmm. What about the boat? What kind was it? It's a fish boat. Same boat. Okay. Can you describe that for us? 50-footer, steel hull. Mm -hmm. Didn't get a look at the name at all, did you? No. Did you recognize it if you saw it again? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can do that. No, that won't be a problem. No, I think we can work that out. OK. Yeah. Take care. Watch go. You deaf? I've been yelling at you for half a block. Hey, Dino. I was on the phone. What, what, what's going on? How you doing? Good. Just taking some holiday time. So, uh, I heard. What can I do for you? Nothing. I just wanted to congratulate you. What, you've been on the new job two weeks already? That's right. So you must be halfway up the chief's ass by now. Yeah, yeah. Far enough, I can just about touch your toes. He's my cousin, in case you didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, well, we have Sunday dinners a couple of times a month. Oh, thanks for clearing that up. Anyway, congratulations. All right, man. Take it easy. Man. Yeah, cheers. Hey, Leo Shannon. Yeah? What can I do for you? Well, I understand you're taking early retirement. I just wanted to say, you know, congratulations. I am. I wasn't aware I'd made that decision. Oh, really? Oh, I understood you were. Oh, my mistake. You know, it's, it's a good idea. I hear there's a nice bonus with that package. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. What the hell business is it of yours? Well, maybe you can enjoy a little time with the little missus. Or, you know, the girlfriend. Or maybe... Ah! Oh, Leo! Oh. What are you doing? Oh. Oh. All right. You just bought yourself retirement for sure. That idiot wants some more. Leo. Somebody should have popped you in the schoolyard a long time ago, you little piece of ass wipe. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Leo. Thank you very much. What was that about? His wife just passed away. Well, I didn't know. I apologize. Well, like that's worth something. All right, what's your name? I'm going to want a witness statement. Yeah, you got a pencil. I'll yeah. spell it out for you. K-I-S-S, -S, my ass. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Take a look. I didn't want to take it out of there. Where is it? Down in the cabin. Right up there. What made you look up there? Well, the bulb was out. I don't know what it is, but it shouldn't be there. It looks like a transmitter of some kind. Yeah, it's hardwired right into the boat here. Someone was tracking the boat. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. We should just put that back together just like you found it. Let's get a picture first. Show my camera in the car. OK. Hey, Russ, Russ, you must be so happy to get the car back. It looks immaculate. That's not job. today, Dominic. Make an appointment like everyone else. Just take right? a second. It's a simple question. I'm sorry, but not today. We're already running late. Today's right. perfect. Okay. It's the morning that you hired Bill Jacobs, the day after your car was stolen. Did you make a call to Bill to ask about that? I don't recall. Well, you must remember that was the day you hired Bill. All right. Look, here's how we're going to handle this from now on. If you want to talk to me, you can speak with my lawyer, all right? Name? I'll get you that. You know, I'll subpoena you, Russ. I can do that, and I will if I have to. Okay, I'm going to call you for that name, right? All right. Who should I ask for? Linda Davis. Good. I saw you headed over this way. I figured you might be in here. Yeah, it's quiet here. Yeah, there used to be koi in these ponds, but the heron fished them all out. Yeah. Well, all good things have to come to an end. What's that mean? Well, I'm probably going to get the boot for sure now after that little scene. He provoked you. He insulted your relationship. I'll back that up. <sighs> Time was I wouldn't have let that get at me. No? No, I would have just smiled at the little girl and got him back later when he wasn't expecting it. I was just stupid back there. I'm losing my touch. You still got time for payback. <sighs> Uh, yeah, 
911. I need a moment, please. Just one second. There's some 911 calls uh, made from the home of Linda Davis on East Fifth. You track those down for me. Okay. Any idea when? No. Dominic. Are you feeling all right? Yeah. Fine. I'm a little pissed off, but fine. Thanks for asking. I heard you talk to the mayor earlier and threatened him with a subpoena. Yes, I did. Would you like to tell me why? Well, I did actually tell you, but you just blew it off. Well, remind me. Maybe it'll make more sense to me today. And let's try and keep this under the allowable decibel level, shall we? All right. This is about the mayor and about the fact that he's trying to cover something up, something involving the hit and run with his car there, eh? Allegedly trying to cover something I'm up. alleging. Fine. If I don't do something about it, I'm not doing my job. That's what I told you the other day. Well, if you continue to do something about it, you may not have a job. You can't just go around attacking the mayor and the chief of police and not expect certain repercussions. I mean, I hate to repeat myself ad nauseum here, but you are seriously underestimating these people's influence. I mean, they meet, they talk, for God's sake. Uh -huh. So you're agreeing with me. You think something's going on, too. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You wouldn't try to warn me off like this if you didn't somehow see my point. Coroners are dispensable. That includes me, and it certainly includes you. So let me lay out my position one more time quite clearly for you. Lay it out for me. If you continue to stir this pot, you're going to come under some serious fire. I'm not scared of these guys. And that's what scares me. I was a cop, OK? I was a cop for a long time. I know exactly how these guys think. They think that they don't have to answer to anybody, that they're impervious to criticism. As a matter of fact, they think that they can run everything. They can run things better than anybody else. And that leads to a certain arrogance. And that arrogance, that leads to an out-of-control force. Now, the police force has to answer to someone. They can't answer to themselves, or otherwise they don't really answer to anyone. Well, you're not the first one to attempt something like this. I mean, there's a long list of people who have fallen under the wheels of that very same truck. And believe me, Dominic, it is a big truck. Bob, I realize that. Look, I don't have a problem with your goals. It's your strategies. They could seriously do with some improving. OK. What do you suggest? Try and be a little less public in your attack. Be, be a little more devious. Mm. And try and find yourself some other allies besides myself. Because you're backing me up on this one now? Yes, but it has to appear as if I'm not, right? But you are. Yes, but it has... Look, the... we've got two separate issues here, right? right? We've got the mayor, right? The mayor reports his car stolen. He says it was stolen from outside his house, not his girlfriend's. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's not in any way implicated in the hit and run, right? Not really, no. We got a kid for that. But the kid's backtracking on his statements. Now he's saying that he didn't steal a car and he didn't steal it in front of the girlfriend's house. So he seems to be going to great lengths to conceal the girlfriend. Right, right, right. So the question is, who is she connected to? Who is she connected to, of course. Oh, that's a great question. Well, we should find out, right? Find that one. I should be more devious. Please, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Doing very well with his new girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You look fantastic. Did I mention how fantastic you look? Thank you. You did. I thought I did. So, what is this about? Well, first of all, thank you for taking the time in what must be your busy schedule. What with all the toes you've been stepping on lately? Your schedule's not that busy. There's always time to step on a few toes. I came out here with the Deputy Minister for Health. Oh, did you? Oh, that's one of his rare trips out here to the West Coast, eh? I'm a little surprised you found the right plane. So is this about the red light district, then? Yes, it is. You really think you can make that fly out here? I do. But it's not up to us. It's up to you guys. The feds, they got need some laws changed, eh? Well, what if there were to be a period of testing, something like the safe injection site, an experiment? Yeah, absolutely. Now, there's, there's a few places that we could put it ready to go right now. As a matter of fact, I got the practical bits all worked out. Well, do you think you can get me a proposal before I leave early next week? It's in my computer. I can get it for you tonight. Well, here's to a good idea. Good ideas. Thanks. So tell me, you were going for the chief of police. Yeah, I lost. Guess you heard. 
Oh, we all heard. We? Who's we now? People in Ottawa. We have our eyes on you. You have some good ideas. I'm not sure why you're stroking me like this, but I have to ask you not to stop. I'm kind of getting to like it. You speak up for people. You're a disturber. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe I got the drift of where you're going with this. Do you? Yeah, maybe it's the uh, last federal election, the fact that you guys got really hammered yet again. And then maybe you're going to look for some new candidates out here in the glorious West, and maybe you want somebody the public sort of knows. Of me. Any interest? No, none. I don't think I could really work under a, under a party banner. You know what I mean? Like half the stuff you guys stand for. I don't agree with it. And the other half doesn't make much sense to me. Well, I had to ask. I mean, I'm not flatter. Don't get me wrong about that. But maybe I'm just not much of a team player. I don't know. Sorry. Oh. Let's take a peek. Take the driver's seat. Can I tell you, friend, we're here? Hello? Step out of the vehicle, sir. Step out of the car, please, sir. How old are you, son? Fifteen. Did I hear that right? He said he was 20. See some ID. Come on. Let's take a little walk and tell me your story. What do you do for a living, Don? I'm a drug counselor. Really? Mm -hmm. Counsel people trying to break their habits. That's right, yes. Counsel kids? Yes. It sounded really bad to me if you told me this kid over here was one of your clients. I've never, ever done this before. I mean, it just came over me and please. Please, can we talk about this? I mean, uh, um, I'll do anything. Anything. I mean, this would really ruin my life. Yeah, I imagine that it would. I, I, I know things uh, that could help you. Yeah, you know things? What sort of things? Uh, my clients tell me things about um, drug deals and uh, illegal activities. Now I see what you're getting at. You want to make a deal of some kind? Yes. Yes. Talk to my partner. You stay right here. How's that going? Yeah, I think he's ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is it. Oh, not too shabby. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was lovely seeing you again. Likewise. Do you have time to come up for a drink? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Would you mind waiting a few moments before you come up? Oh, I'm fine. See you upstairs. Okay. 11.01. 1101. Oh, geez, no. No, 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 no. Not tonight. How you doing? Yeah, I know you're not on call. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm phoning for a favor. It's kind of an emergency, okay? I'm right in the middle of something. It's a situation that's kind of delicate. And Oh, Lou, you're beautiful. Okay, I owe you, okay? Yeah, right now. Okay, but Is that enough time? Yeah. How you doing tonight? Occupied. Can I come in? Oh. Oh, you know, the time is. 
I gotta just, I get time ready to shave, shower, and I gotta go right back to work. I'm on call, eh? Russ and I had a fight. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. How can, how can I help? I need someone to talk to. Okay, sure. Jeez, I just wish there was more time. It's just not the best time. I gotta go. Why? Am I embarrassing you? No. Well, I apologize. No, oh, don't apologize for anything. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. Why don't you stay for a coffee? No, that's all right. I'll call a cab. No, you're not taking any cab. No, no, I can't allow that. I'll drive you home, okay? Okay? Everything's gone. Sorry. We can talk in the car. Russ is in serious trouble. Is he? We should he... even be talking to you like this. Yeah, yeah, save it for the car. You know, sometimes it helps if you can just, you know, unload to someone. That'd be the third thing. Watch your feet. Don, how's business? Fine. Thank you for meeting with us. Everything okay? You look a little wound up. No, everything's not okay. I, I do not feel very good about this. My clients, trust me, I really cannot reveal any of the contents of our sessions, all right? Are you a lawyer? Doctor? I can't go along with this. I can't, can't make up statements, not about Susan Lewis, not about anybody. Okay. That's fine. Thank you for telling us. I'll we'll just have to think of something else. Yeah, we will. Thanks. Thank you. I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, your boy, Doug, that's his name. Doug. We had to talk him out of bringing up rape charges. Please don't do this to me. You made your own bed. With a 15-year-old boy in it. Wait. Wait. Wait up. I'll do that. I'll do what you want. You sure you think this is the right thing to do? Was that a yes? It's the right thing to do. You feel conflicted, but in the end, you realize you've got to tell somebody before this girl hurts somebody else. Right? I will call you at Pleasant evening, did we? What time was it? Noon. How was your dinner with Isabel? Oh, geez, that was great. How'd you know about that? I arranged it. Oh. Uh, okay, well, we got a bigger, bigger problem. I got home this morning, well, late last night, and guess, guess who's waiting for me on my doorstep? And I get there, the mayor's wife completely loaded out of her mind. She spills the whole deal to me. How intriguing. Tell me more. Oh, I think you were, you were right about uh, the mayor's girlfriend, Linda Davis. She is the connection. Oh, boy. What's going on? We found a GPS locator hidden in this on this boat. Oh, yeah? What's going on with that? Well, we don't know. We need to find out if there's other agencies involved. Other agencies? You think this was planted by narcs watching the boat? Yeah, it could be. You still got friends in narcotics? Yeah, uh, I dated uh, Ryan Nichols. Trust him? Yeah. We need to know if the narc squad was watching the boat, and if they weren't, who might have been. So just a fishing expedition? Yeah, exactly. Okay, or you'll owe me. Okay. I'll call him. I'll give him a call. Okay, but no names. Just keep it obscure who you're talking about. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll call you. Thanks, Suki. I haven't done anything illegal. You can't just arrest me without cause. We had a complaint that you pulled a knife on somebody this evening. When was this? Do you own a knife? No, I do not. What's this here? That's a razor blade. What do you use that for? 
Chopping blow. Did you pull this on somebody this evening? No. If there's a bad trick out tonight, we'd like to know about it. So would I. Where do you live, Susan? At a hostel in Richards. You have a room there. It's a hostel. They've got rooms. What room are you in? 22. All right, you can go. When'd you get this? Just a couple of weeks ago. Out here. Yeah, it's beautiful, huh? Mm-hmm. Isn't this where the squatters tie up? Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's very romantic. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Watch out. So did you end up talking to Ryan? Oh, yeah, I did. He knew a little about it. You did? Yeah. All right, so what do you got for me? I don't know. What do you got for me? You first. OK, so the city narcs uh, weren't watching well, but the horsemen were. The RCMP? Yeah. I showed him the picture of the GPS, and he said that's the model they use. It's interesting. that with me? All right. Hope you don't mind a plastic coat. No, I don't mind. Funniest family comedy. I'm the two